It is 9.45 a.m. Wednesday, Humpty Hump Day, December 1st. Time to change this bitch out. Another month sober. Good morning, everyone. My coffee's brewing. And getting ready for work. Me and my four hours of sleep. <laughs> We're rotating. We ro we rotating calendars. All right, October you're done. Get over here, November. Go to the back. You're done. Never to be undone or redone. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Never to be undone or redone. All right, let's get you in there, December. All right. So, today, Wednesday, December 1st, 2021, this is 185 days later, another month, another day, one day at a fucking time. Welcome to 185 Days Later, a sobriety vlog. Let's get this shit started, everybody. Have an awesome, blessed day. Quick test. One, two. My name's Joe, and I'm an alcoholic. And this, not really, is 185 Days Later, a sobriety vlog. And as of today, actually yesterday, I have been sober 185 days. And I think I finally got this shit figured out. Neighbor's gonna love that. Yesterday when I went to record the vlog, some technical difficulties. I, you know, I've been doing so good, but but let's give me a break and say between being sick with you know what, having to come back to work and readjust, my whole schedule has been off. The one thing that's amazing is I'm actually getting work done without falling asleep during my shift. Thank you and God bless you, gigantic pot of coffee. So, let me get this off my head. Got a couple of clips for today of my epic bed head, which actually looked like while I had been laying in bed, someone shoved an electrical wire up my ass and shocked me. But that's okay. You know, if, you're, if your hair can't be messy when you get out of bed, when can it be messy? So, yesterday, Wednesday, December 1st, 
2021, 185 days later, sober the whole day, worked my ass off the whole day, work calmed down a bit, Monday and Tuesday were crazy, go nuts, brutal. I guess everybody from all the schools and all the places and all the world were calling on Monday and Tuesday because they couldn't call last week and that shit's to be expected. So... I was doing setup last night, and the way that I finally bypassed everything is I have, you know, this mic is going into my audio interface here. I have another mic going in front of a speaker in front of my PC over there where the guitar sound is coming out of, out of THU, and there's a separate microphone running from here in front of that speaker. It's, it's kind of, I have a speaker mic for the old other PC. And then this, I've got the wireless over here going into that interface. If it works, it works. Tell me if it sounds good or what. I think it'll work out pretty good. So, Ed, I saw your comment yesterday. Yes, I did tell the story about Sarah Von Doom and all that and how I got the guitar, but that ended up in the footage that had to be scrapped. So, long story short, how I got Sarah Von Doom and how she got her name. I told the story before. I worked for a Catholic church. You know what? Let's take a break and look at a few clips, and then we'll be right back. Okay, this has to be the most epic bedhead ever. It is 8.55 a.m. December 2nd. It looks like I had rolled over on some fucking electrical... (laughs) Someone jammed the cattle prod up my ass. Look at that shit. That is fucking awesome. That is the best. Look at that fucking bedhead. (laughs) <laughs> well, you know what? This this is 185 days later. Technically, today's 186 days later, but I'm filming for 185 days later because we had some more technical bullshit last night. We'll catch up. I guess getting back to work and being sick with COVID for a week and all that shit knocked me off schedule. I'm human. Forgive me. Oh, man. All right. December 1st was to have one miraculous accomplishment on my behalf because I didn't get a vlog done. I did get to make Mikey's meatballs. With only 30 minutes left in my lunch hour, I was like, ah, fuck it. Let me cook the meatballs. So now later on when the nurse gets here, she'll puree them up and he'll have food. That's it. I accomplished one thing yesterday. I went to my AA meeting and I stayed sober. So I guess I accomplished a little bit more. I did a full day of work and made people happy. So you got to look on the bright side. When, the, when that holiday depression sets in and life tries to fist you, think of something bright. Think of the pot of meatballs you made for somebody else. Especially when you can't eat for another two fucking days and you could chew the metal off of this lid. Just look at that. Mmm. Mm-mm-mm. Goodness gracious. And we're back. So, yeah, I worked for a Catholic church. This was, you know, after I first moved down here to Orlando, I had shit. I didn't even have a guitar. You know, because life sometimes presents those 
options to you where you keep your shit and starve or you sell your shit and you survive and keep the lights on and keep food on the table and all that other good shit. So I chose to reluctantly sell my shit and survive to fight another day. So I'm, I'm, I go to church on a Monday, right? Obviously, any church, the big days are the weekend. For a Catholic church, that's Saturday and Sunday, you know? So my church had about five, 6,000 people row through every weekend, maybe. Maybe five or four. And those, you got to remember, everyone coming in, dips their fingers in the holy water font and blesses themselves. So Monday morning, I come into, I come into church and I go to dip my finger in the holy water font and I'm like, I stop right before my finger touches the water. It's like this little mini swamp thing in the dish, like giving me the middle finger. It was nasty. You got to imagine a few thousand people dipping their dirty fingers in there. And the people that cleaned the church the night before, they didn't clean it out. And every one of them was like that. There's one by every door. There's actually two by every door. You come in, you know, double doors. So I actually said out loud, I said, Lord, I'm going to clean all these up for you just because I love you. I don't want nothing in return. I literally said that. I said, Lord, I'm going to clean all these founts out for you and fill them with fresh holy water. And I don't even want nothing just because I love you. So I did. I, I scrubbed them all out, shined them all up, refilled them with holy water, and that was it. A half hour later, 45 minutes later, I'm in the, um, I'm hanging out with the music director, who's the dude my age. We're in his office, and we're, and this is back in the, um, Probably before the 2000s or early, two, or not 2000s, um, before 2010 or early, like 2010, something around there. No, it was probably about 2009 or 2008. Uh, and actually, it might have been 2007. See, it shows you what I remember. And um, we're watching Randy Rhodes' videos on YouTube. This is before YouTube took him down. Because at one point, I think... Kevin DeBrow from Quiet Riot did a documentary and he, and he had them all taken down. I don't know. But there was a lot of cool live videos of Randy up from the Quiet Riot days. And we would watch them. It was awesome. And I was like, oh, man, I wish I had a guitar to play on. I miss playing on a guitar. And he, and, and he says to me, he goes, I thought Mary gave you, Mary, the woman that worked at church, her son's guitar. I said, yeah, but that's a first act. It's one of those ones that comes with the amp. I says, you know, you want to drive Indy 500 and you got like an old DeSoto. You, you just, there's things you just can't do. I mean, it was okay for a beginner, but you can't go cr crazy, go nuts on that fucking thing. So he looks at me, goes, you know what? Hold on. Gets up from behind his desk, goes into the closet and takes this out inside the case. He goes here. I open the case, look at this thing, and I'm, I'm immediately in love. I love natural wood guitars. The black inlays, fuck, this thing is fucking beautiful. You have to say this thing is fucking beautiful. And I'm like, what? He goes, it's yours. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, I just got it back. It's just been refretted. It's yours. Take it. I said, are you sure? He goes, yeah, I'm, I've been uh, saving up for an Ernie Ball. I'm getting like a $2,000 guitar. It's, it's fine. And this is, this is how I got this guitar. Now, how the guitar got the butterflies and shit on it i was hanging out with a friend named sarah and sarah had gotten into some trouble and i was helping sarah and sarah had a butterfly tattoo on her back so that's how the, but the but butterflies got on this and i named the guitar after her i tried to unname the guitar because sarah left me homeless <laughs> but the sticker where i put her names wouldn't come off completely the other night, when I got a bug up my ass to turn this into a doom machine, for some reason, I said, you know what? I'm naming this thing Sarah Von Doom. Now, the Von Doom, one, all right, the Doom, I love Doom metal. But when I hear the word Doom, I think of Dr. Doom from Fantastic Four and Marvel Comics. You know, his name's Victor Von Doom. So I took the Von Doom, put it together with Sarah, and this is how we got Sarah Von Doom. Ooh. I think she 
likes it. for 186 days later which is actually now 